So who knows what's going to happen in today's video. Nope, 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 nope. Ah, the sky out is phenomenal. Rambling, waffling idiot. You know, I suppose this is a really... Ooh, yeah, that's just a shot of my hand. This is so good. Wow, the rain's coming down. Oh no. No, no. Oh God. I'm not even supposed to be out right now, but a last minute hastily made decision sees me wandering around in this beautiful ancient woodland in the Lake District. Oh my God, it's so muddy. Oh, I'm staying in the van tonight as well, so all of this mud is coming in the van with me. So where was I? So yeah, today's been a one of those days, very, very stressful. Uh, lots going on and I just, I was at home and my mind was just flitting back and forth. I felt like I had a million things to do but I couldn't focus on one single thing. And that is, that's a horrible feeling. I thought there's no way I'm gonna go out with my camera this weekend because I've just got too much to do. And I decided that actually, I don't have that much to do. And everything I do have to do, <laughs> I can do on the road, from the van, whilst just getting out and looking, you know, just getting out with the camera. And here's the most important thing, and I apologize for any wind noise. Here's the most important thing, whoa, most important thing. I said to myself, I'm gonna go out with no expectations and have a completely open mind. No ideas of shots in mind, no ideas of locations in mind. I'm just gonna go and we'll see what happens when we get there. And well, here I am under the tree. Ah! Yep, I'm definitely caught. Oh, so it's currently 5.54. Sunset is at 18.21 or 6.21. So what's that, like 28 minutes? <laughs> 28 minutes, I've only just arrived. I've got a Skype call with Brendan Van Son. You guys know Brendan from Patagonia. Got a Skype call with Brendan at seven o'clock. So I need to get back to the van before it gets dark and then drive to the nearest village where I can get signal or service so I can then Skype with Brendan. Uh, to be honest with you guys, it's not looking good for this evening, <laughs> but it's not, and as I said to myself before, when leaving the house, it's not about going out and getting an amazing image. Just go and see what you see. That's the best thing. When you strip photography back, when you strip it right back, for me, it's all about walking around, exploring, not really knowing what you're gonna get, and just having that open, creative mind to be able to see anything from a, you know, a ginormous sunset lit mountain to a, hideous twisted branch in a dull grey forest. That's where the real pleasure lies. Yeah. Obviously though, that pleasure is enhanced tenfold when you have beautiful light and amazing conditions. But still, even on a day like today, you've just got to choose the right location to get the most out of it. Hence why I'm in another woodland. It's autumn, it's grey, it's windy, it's miserable. Come to the woods. Just ask Simon Baxter, he knows. He knows. Come to the woods. See what you can see. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying this quality content so far. Yeah. You know, it's not all about getting those award-winning images. They're few and far between. It's about being out here and getting creative. Speaking of which, I have a new lens. In, well, no, I have a different lens. In, no, a new lens. I've had the lens that I've got. <laughs> I've got a new lens in my bag. It's not new. I've had it for about eight years, but I just, I used it for weddings back in the day. Um, and it's a 85 millimeter f1.8. And I've brought it with me, just on the off chance, I see that shallow depth of field kind of image. So yeah, maybe we'll break that out and get it a bit abstract. I'm not sure, still, 1758, running low on time. So I'm not sure how many of you guys have signed up to my newsletter, but for those of you who are, you will probably already know why I've been stressed and why I've got to Skype Brendan in about an hour's time. And yeah, it's, it's 
Well, I may as well tell you about it, you know, not to try and make this a salesy video, far from it, but this is the biggest thing I've ever done. And um, yeah, basically me and Brendan, we, last year, we decided that our workshop to Patagonia would be no more. We were basically stopping or, you know, that was, we, we basically, we, <laughs> why can't I talk? Oh God. We announced that this year's trip, next year's trip to Patagonia was gonna be the last. And we really wanted something to fill that void. And we had all these crazy ideas of making something bigger and better and involving more people. And we came up with this idea of a photography conference, which is nothing new, of course. Um, and then maybe after a couple of beers, I'm not sure, we decided, wouldn't it be cool to have a floating photography conference on a ship? But wouldn't it be cool if we could get a ship going to the best place on planet Earth, which is Antarctica? And you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. We've only, <laughs> we've only gone and done it. We, oh God, no, it's wet. Now, obviously, me and Brendan can't do this by ourselves. It would be the worst conference ever if it was just, just me and Brendan. So we've built a team and there's some phenomenal people in that team. We sort of compiled a list. And Pat's gone. Like on the right. I always get lost, you know. So we reached out to this list of photographers, the dream team, if you like, and um, they all said yes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So we've got, including me and Brendan, a team of 10 photographers, our own ship that sails to Antarctica with a full expedition crew, Zodiac, chef, musician, bar, everything. We've got the full shebang and we're doing it next year in 2020. And we're launching it, well, we launched it on Monday and I guess today's Wednesday, so I'm letting you know about it now. Although it was never my intention to do a salesy video. Oh God, it's so wet. I think I'm a bit off the beaten track here. Yeah, the photographers got to see if you know any of the names. Some you know, some you may not know. But we've got Morton Hilmer, Donnell Boyd, so that's two wildlife photographers. We've got Erin Babnick. We've got Rachel Talibart. River, no! We've got portrait photographer Julia Trotty and Sean Tucker. We've also, we've also got Sarah Hatton, who's this huge up and coming Australian landscape photographer. And we've got Mike Mizul the second. Now I'm gonna have to ask him, if he's watching this video, I'm gonna have to ask him why he's the second. But yeah, Mike Mizul, who's just epic landscape photographer. So I'm not going to go on any more about it. I'll stick a link below, check it out. It's the biggest thing me and Brendan have ever done, but it's also the most sort of excited, you know, it's the most excited we've been about something ever, even more so than Patagonia when we first started that. So definitely go and take a look. Um, and I would say as well, again, don't want to get salesy. I would say the price is incredibly competitive. So there you go for Antarctica, of course. Still a lot of money. Right. Well, I think I've got about five minutes of light left. And I'm looking for something, some way of some way that I can utilize my 1.8 lens. Come on. Be nice just to whoa. Oh man, I'm I've got to sleep in the van. I've got to sleep in the van and I'm just getting absolutely soaking wet and muddy. Nah. Right, come on, where's no! Ah! Uh. Nope, 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 ah! Yeah, it was a, uh, just not enough time. 20 minutes, 25 minutes, nowhere near enough time. So I need to drive to the nearest town stroke village, get myself some phone service, and then settle in for the night. So we're gonna pick this video up tomorrow morning, I think. First light, see what conditions we have. Uh, 
look at that sky. I did not see that coming. Can you pick that up on the GoPro? The sky out is phenomenal. I'm not gonna lie, it's painful. But, you know, there'll be someone out there getting a good shot tonight. Absolutely guaranteed. So I woke up quite late this morning. Um, I looked out of the van just before sunrise and it was fairly gray and there was no light and there was no real atmosphere. So I didn't feel the need to jump out of bed and get myself in position ready for the sunrise. Because often in this location where I am, which is the Lake District, sunrise doesn't necessarily count for much because there are lots of hills and mountains blocking the light. You know, the light won't penetrate the valleys until a good hour or so after sunrise. So it was actually quite nice to have a bit of a lie-in and a cup of tea before setting off for a day's photography. So conditions are quite nice this morning. Last night when I was rushing around uh, trying to get a photograph in all of 20 minutes, um, that wasn't necessarily, that wasn't really a photo shoot. I was going out um, to check out an area and as well to check out the conditions. Um, and it's looking good. The colors are very vibrant at the minute. Not everything's turned yet. There's still a lot of green, but there are good splashes of yellow and orange and browns as well the whole the whole landscape is starting to change and that's phenomenal and that's sort of brings me on to what I'm photographing here now at this moment if you watched my video last week you'll have seen that I was running around trying to find a, a splash of color trying to find that bit of contrast and that focal point and that's exactly what I have here but it's on a bigger scale and it came to me a lot easier than the composition which I shot in last week's video. So let me talk you through this before we grab the shot and then move on. So there is a small cluster of silver birch trees. I think there's one, two, three, four, four of them. Four trees and you can just see them just here. Just there, see that? A little colour there, yep. <laughs> Those trees, they're, they're vibrant. They're almost peak colour right now. And this whole kind of scene um, where they're sitting just works beautifully well in terms of balance and the fact that we don't have to deal with a sky that's going to be too bright or washed out because we have a nice big fell as a backdrop and that fell is full of all of this bracken which is turning a lovely rusty reddy brown colour and yeah the composition struck me because these this group of four trees really really stands out in the bigger landscape and it's it's a clear and obvious kind of focal point something for the eye to land on immediately and it's very well supported by a lovely palette of autumnal color around the yellow trees so there isn't much more to it than that there's not much more that i can say it's all about when photographing intimate scenes and not necessarily you know the big view but when looking at smaller smaller views uh, for me certainly it's all about just trying to find that, that key focal point, that key subject, that area of interest. Um, and this group of four trees definitely caught my eye as being you know, a clear focal point that sits within the, the landscape or the smaller vignette of the landscape. 
I'm shooting at just over 100 mil at f8, which will give me a nice sharp image. There's no foreground to worry about being sharp, so I don't need depth of field. I'm not worried about the background being a bit soft. If anything, that's quite nice and that gives it a nice painterly effect. I'm focusing on the main tree trunk, the main trunk of uh, either of those four birch trees and I've got them dead center in my frame, dead center. So yeah, there you go, all in all, it's a nice little scene. I think conditions aren't bad today. I'm hoping for a bit of light as the sun starts to get higher in the sky, and then I think that'll transform the scene. Um, but yeah, of course it would be nice to have some mist. But like I say, if you watched last week's video, then a bit of processing and we can really bring out the qualities in any good composition without needing to rely on the elusive mist. So yeah, I better hurry up and grab this shot because I want to move on and see if we can find something else. I'm absolutely loving this morning. The colours are out, the winds are calm and hopefully we'll get some light. So here we go. First shot of the day. And not a bad one to start. So one of the things that's helped me a lot with my photography is, I don't know, it's difficult to articulate, it's hard to explain. Um, instead of going out to take a single image or go and find a specific shot, which don't get me wrong, is, is great. And if you have something in mind that you plan, then go ahead and do that. But if you're like me, <laughs> often unsure of what you want to shoot, sorry guys, stepping stones. If you're unsure of what you want to shoot, and it gets to the evening and the night before and you're packing your bags and you still don't know what you want to go and photograph. And then you start questioning the weather and questioning yourself and you think it might just be easier to stay in bed. <laughs> if like me, you do that quite a lot, um, try and forget about photography in the sense of it being a single image, going out and capturing a single image. Instead, just pick an area, big area like a certain part of a national park or a, a certain river bank or an entire lake or an entire fell. Just pick an area and instead of saying, right, tomorrow morning I'm gonna go and I'm gonna, gonna go and photograph this image, just say I'm gonna go tomorrow and I'm gonna spend the day walking around that area, looking for tiny images and big vistas as well. And that way, you give yourself way more options and less pressure because you're not going out to shoot a specific image that relies on certain conditions. You're just going out to see what you see. Um, I don't know if that's made any sense or if I'm just a rambling, waffling idiot. But I find that the more pressure there is on me, put on by myself, placed there by myself, then the harder time I have enjoying photography and making images. Yeah. So instead, pick an area, explore it. You might get an image, you might not. But at least then you can come back when conditions suit the area where you explored. <sighs> okay. Onwards.
So there's a lot going on right now, a lot going on. It was raining a couple of minutes ago and there's this black cloud rolling in but you've also got a lot of breaks in that black cloud and those breaks are allowing light to shine through onto the landscape. You know, it's, it's 17 minutes past 12. This, by rights, should be the worst time to do some landscape photography. But actually, actually the conditions right now are just superb. We've got light shining on different parts of the landscape, dramatic black clouds beyond the landscape. It, it really does look quite nice and quite dramatic. The problem and the difficulty is managing it all. So you have a couple of choices. You can either wait and wait and be very patient for the light to all fall in the right place and capture the image. Or you can do what I'm doing, which is keeping my camera fixed in its position, everything locked off, everything manual, and just taking an exposure every now and again as the light changes. And then I'll be able to pick my best exposure for the foreground, different patches of light on it and then one for the sky because the problem is the majority of the sky is lovely dark and black but there are still really bright hot spots in the sky and I don't think it's going to happen whereby I get lovely light on the foreground and a completely dark sky in the background I don't think that's going to happen I think it's going to be one or the other so I'm just going to monitor the scene photograph the scene as it changes and then maybe I can take two or three of those images from the set and just blend different areas into the image so I get a, a perfect exposure. Yeah. There we go. Just a waiting game now. So I haven't had any light on the foreground for about 15 minutes now but what has happened is the sky has been changing a lot in the background of the composition. So I've got plenty of images with the sky so I'm happy there. Now it's just a case of waiting for the light to come and splash onto the foreground. And it looks like it's gonna happen because there's breaks in the sky above me. I can see light on the fells all around me. So it's definitely gonna happen. And actually right now, the sky is looking the best it's looked. We've got very, very few hot spots, very manageable. And we've got light on the foreground. Yes, come on. Here comes the light. Oh, it's just a little bit, just a splash, but it's coming, it's coming, and we should, uh, whew, a bit bright, should get quite a nice photograph here. You know, for the middle of the day, for the middle of the day. It's not bad at all. Just a bit of patience. Oh, the sky is, the sky is perfect. The sky is perfect. We just need a good splash of light on the foreground and we are golden. Ah, oh, it's just so good. So the sky, it was, I was worried about the hotspots in the sky. Right now there are no hotspots yet. We have light on the foreground. It's just perfect. I couldn't have asked for anything better. I don't even think, I don't think I'm gonna to need to blend any images. I think we've got this in a wanna. So there you go, patience and perseverance. And of course, if it didn't happen, then I would have had a combination of images that I could have picked apart and, you know, made it that way. But I've gotta say it is, it is better to get it in one. Um, all right, oh gosh. I'm just, what I'm doing now, I'm just sheltering the lens, sheltering the lens from, uh, why didn't you shoot, come on. Sheltering the lens from the sun so we don't get any lens flare. Oh, this is really nice. Now what's happening right now is we're just getting light on a little portion of the landscape, the hill, the castle crag there, that is in shadow, but all of this foreground, midground, this has got light on it. So, you know, I suppose this is, a, Really, ooh, yeah, that's just a shot of my hand. <laughs> that's no good. And there we go. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So I said before, 
that it's probably never going to happen to have, you know, the perfect combination of light on the foreground and sky. Um, but it happened. I'm just going to flick through these images. <laughs> that was me trying to shield the uh, shield the lens and again, so we'll ditch those two. But I think, hang on, wait for it, 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 wait for it. That one there, this one. This one looks really nice. I'm gonna, gonna go through them all on the computer. So, you know, I may choose a different image, but this one really caught my eye. Just because we've got light on the trees here in the foreground, dark in the midground, and we have light on the hill in the background. But if you look at the sky, the sky is not blown out. I've got no blinking highlights. And uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. If you're interested, there we go. F11, 160th of a second, and I focused my camera right there on the top of that hill. Oh. Right, oh, <laughs> I'm out of shot. All right, guys, well, hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, why do I always lose my lens caps? Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I apologize that it's been a bit all over the place. Um, just, you know, I don't always have a plan and a story to tell while the rain's coming down. Yeah, we're gonna get wet here, hang on. Ugh. Oh no, 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 oh God. <laughs> Ugh. 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 So, as I was saying, I'm packing away now. And I'm gonna call it a day and go and get some dinner. Got some food waiting for me in the van. Um, yeah, don't forget about Antarctica. If you are interested and you've always wanted to come to Antarctica, this is gonna be phenomenal. It's, uh, it's the biggest thing I've ever done. And it's the one thing that I'm looking forward to more than anything else that I've done. So yeah, link below, check out all the other guys that are coming. It's me and Brendan that have organised the whole thing. So, expect it to be a lot of fun. All right. That rain is my cue to go. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye for now.